welcome to another brew day video this one is going to be my first on the long awaited and anticipated uh, Grainfather G40 I'm going to be making my orange pale ale or OPA it, it's moderately hopped about um, 27 or so IBUs and I'm going to be adding into this batch um, about 100 grams of bitter orange peel as well so we can put the G40 through its paces in terms of 8 kilos of grain and plenty of hops, plenty of um, adjuncts as well just to see how, how the filtration system behaves itself so I've loaded my recipe into the Grainfather app I've also managed to connect the um, Grainfather app and this equipment via Wi-Fi as well granted it did take me a few goes and I had to reinstall the app but that may be a problem with my phone or a problem between the phone and the equipment which is me um, yeah if you are having connection issues maybe delete the app and re-download it that fixed it for me but like I said could just be me so this recipe is available on the Grainfather app um, visible to all I'll also leave a link in the description below there you can see we're connected to the Grainfather G40 right now online via Wi-Fi and that shows you the uh, the information so in order to follow this so I'm going to select my OPA go to the menu and hit brew recipe start brew just to follow this it's telling me to fill the Grainfather G40 with 34.62 litres of water which should be handy because we have the sight glass on the side step one 34 litres of water let's go that's approximately 34.6 don't know if you can see that there but uh, and then start heating so it's ramping temp target 69 degrees looking good right let's weigh out the grains so we're just uh, a few minutes in already at um, 30.5 degrees it's very accurate I've put the lid on as well Just see if it'll warm up quicker it's very strange having uh, what was it seven and a half kilos of pale malt and half kilo of Cara Gold. I forgot to mention as well I'm doing a 40 litre batch. The equipment profile it says 40 litre pre-boil volume. I don't have a 40 litre fermenter so it's gonna have to be um, across two fermenters. Didn't think that one through did I? So I've just put the, uh, put the water additions into the G40 now. Whilst it's coming up to temperature I just wanted to mention size of this cable so not just the length but the girth as well it's a very thick gauge it's like I think 365 square mil I've decided to plug it into this dedicated socket over here rather than on the end of your traditional uh, 1.5 flex that uh, extension lead that you have here in the UK I think it'd be too much draw on that so maybe something to consider is to plug it straight into a ring main it is drawing a lot of power, it's 2,900 watts. Um, I have done a, a, an unboxing and first impressions video of this, um, so I'll leave the link in the description below as well if you want to go and check that out, if you want any, any more details. So we're currently at 53 degrees, and we're aiming for a strike temperature of 69 degrees, and then we're going to be mashing at 65 degrees for one hour so notification strike temperature has been reached also says on the machine itself ok 
Okay. Add grain now. Add the grains. God, that's bossy. Something else I've found as well is you can turn this into a water feature. Check this out. How pretty is that? So hopefully that uh, bird's eye view is okay there. One thing that um, I had to check with um, Grainfather on this one was there doesn't there isn't a malt pipe and a um, a top plate for the mash, which is very odd having been used to the G30 and from what I've seen of the G70 as well that also has a malt pipe and this one doesn't so yeah see so how we get on with that here we go finished mashing in now the eight kilos of grain it's a very loose consistency and I think this is probably all to do with not having the malt pipe and the um, top plate so it allows the grain to um, freely move around the grain basket and the grain basket has got um, perforated holes down the sides as well as uh, as well as the bottom let's uh, kick this into recirculation just to confirm it does say Insert the assembled grain basket, then slowly add grain and stir well, attach the recirculation hose, then start mash when ready. So, no top plate needed. So, recirculation hose. And this just fits into the grommet on this side. Like so. And then start mash. The pump is about to turn on to recirculate water during the mash. Please make sure the mas mash basket is in place and recirculation hose is attached. Okay, don't show me that again. And away we go. It's whirlpooling the mash. Crikey days. That's got some power to it. We've just finished the mash. Got the sparge tank uh, ready. Uh, it's maxed out at 18 litres, that's how much sparge water we need. And now it's time to lift the grain basket. So to recap, this is 8 kilos of grain. With a load of water sat on top. That's probably my error. Uh, it does say in on the app to have it about an inch above the green, but uh, yeah, my oversight. I love this. Okay, here goes nothing. Crumbs. That's heavy. So the lighting doesn't do the uh, the wart colour any here yeah, any favours, but rest assured this uh, this recipe in the uh, G30 at least does turn out pretty well normally. You can just start to see on the edges where the grain has been catching in this filter or the perforated areas and a big mound of grain in the middle. Not quite sure if that's ideal or not. I'm assuming a nice flat grain bed would be best. But again, could be user error where I've been letting it um, rip around and not controlling this at the beginning of, um, of the mash. I'm just out the sparge now, as you can tell this is uh, my auto sparge which I've obviously used on the G30 so I'll need to uh, try and come up with a bigger version I think let's go with the sparge what I'll 
do, I'll just keep turning this basket periodically just to try and get as even spread as I can. So we've now completed the sparge and you might be able to see from that angle um, just around the edges here we are at the absolute limit because um, the grain basket is very, very nearly touching uh, the wort inside. We currently have pre-boil volume bang on 45 litres so I'm assuming it's going to be a 5 litres per hour boil off rate which I think the G30 was 3 litres per hour just an assumption but we'll, uh, we'll test that out just going to leave this for another 5 minutes and then ramp this right up to boil and take some readings <laughs> yeah, this colour is looking better already now. It's uh, diluted down with that 18 litres. So I'm getting a bit worried earlier. So our pre boil gravity is 1.04. 344 we'll ramp this up okay so we've arrived at uh, somewhat of a, a rolling boil now I'll just see over this area here it has taken quite some time to get to this point um, the alarm went off quite a while ago for the 100, de 100 degree marker but just to get that next step to that rolling boil it has taken a bit of time um, I'm not expecting a, a massive um, hot break foam over because of the surface um, area I don't think we're gonna get that sudden surge creeping up yeah we're boiling so I'm gonna chuck 15 grams of galaxy in and start the timer the alarm for the 10 minutes of Amarillo. Boil's been faultless, no trips. Uh, just been that very nice steady rolling boil. Not even a um, threat of a boil over either. Absolutely dialed in perfectly. So in with the last addition is 100 grams of bitter orange peel, some Irish moss and 30 grams of citra. Yeah baby! So whilst that's just finishing off on the boil, I just want to quickly run through um, my views on how easy this is to clean. So. That obviously is your recirculation pipe, easy to clean. And the mash element is just these two. This one fits sideways like that in a standard size sink. So it's very easy to, to clean. And obviously the, the plate itself is quite easy. There is no um, malt pipe to contend with. There's only one plate rather than two. There's no silicone um, seals to, to clean and contend with. You can see these bits there are a little bit tricky to clean inside here, but providing you clean it straight away, I, I don't foresee any blockages or issues in there. Maybe we can get a keg brush down in there once in a while, but so much quicker and easier to clean than, uh, than what I'm used to. The, the only thing left to clean that's removable inside this now is just a hot filter. That's it. Can't wait to set this up for uh, CIP. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a godsend. That is. There we have it. Boil has finished. 
So that's knocked the heat off. I've just done a quick whirlpool and I'll leave it now for about 10 minutes whilst I get everything else set up. Just let everything settle down to the bottom. Using this app, I think, is is vital for people who are just, just starting to brew because it really gives you that detailed step-by-step. -step. Uh, it's foolproof, even I can do it. Mesmerising. So with this, um, that is the, uh, the, the like a hose, a hose barb, which fits into the grommet on this side, the same place that the recirculation arm was, recirculation pipe, excuse me. So place that into there, and we can bring our return from the counter flow down into. What I like to do is just put it into a uh, a waste jug just to get the half just to get half a liter or so through the counter flow chiller where there's any star sand or water been sat in there so we'll close the valve start the pump and then we'll just open it very slowly as to not disturb the the filter too much so as most of my subscribers will probably know this is my current setup where I've replaced the G30 counter flow chiller with the G40 counter flow chiller. It's much, it's much bigger. It sits flush as well, which is good, rather than the, the feet on the bottom. I like that about it. So we'll just let that run through for about two or three minutes, and then we can uh, transfer it. Okay, we'll bring that through to here. Turn the pump up a bit. There's incredible flow on this. This pump is very powerful. So this has been circulating for a few minutes now. You can see the words looking quite clear. It's looking pretty good. Both fermenters now have been rinsed with star sand. And something to note as well. I've I've always and ah, shit. Um, I've always enjoyed using the. Um, Autometer because this has got all of the um, uh, thermal wells built in. I think this one's right at the bottom. Uh, you obviously can't unplug it as you did the G30 and plug it into this. So I have a spare uh, controller which the original grandfather came with. So I've just connected my watermeter to the old controller to show me 90 degrees, and then when I adjust or start the, uh, the chilling process we should see that drop in there we are like a stone wow that's very efficient that is Ooh, fair dues flying down so once that gets to about 22 degrees I'll uh, chuck it into these fermenters Right. Beautiful. Okay, so we're holding steady at 25 degrees. I'm happy with that. You can see the wart nice and clear. And with the power of this pump, I'm pretty sure that if I were to crack this all the way open and um, have the uh, mash pipe in there, I think we'd have one hell of a um, whirlpool. sample of the water here. Oh, overshot it just a bit. 1.052. I was aiming for 1.045 with an 80% efficiency. Wow. So there we have it. We have 20 litres in this fermenter. 
and then we have and then we have only 17 and a half liters in this one uh, this is uh, something I'm gonna have to dial in maybe the boil off ratio is uh, is more but we didn't get at the 40 liters we were aiming for here's a look at the uh, the aftermath there's a filter under there somewhere here's the handle for the for the filter clean all this out now I've already put a pack of yeast in the um, SS Brutech bucket and another pack into this one as well just 37, 37 and a half litres assuming the scales on these um, so yeah we tried to max it out didn't quite get there but uh, once I once I fine tune it I think I think we'd be there there's still more room to go there there's at least another inch and a half of uh, pre-boil volume I can squeeze in there so I'll leave these out here just for now and uh, get the cleaning underway of the unit itself see how easy that is I'm gonna use my uh, my dough scraper spot on authority of the uh, the hop and the orange peel out so just lift up the filter ooh nice sound there we have it some stuff has come through or down the sides. Yeah, seepage come through, but um, it looks like the filter's done its job actually. It's kept it away from that middle part. Pretty impressed with that. So I really need to uh, get a tap for this. I think it'd be so much easier to clean. I highly recommend getting a tap for it. Check out the flow of the pump. Look at that. Impressive flow rate that is. See it's creating its own vortex. Whoosh! They do. So that just about wraps it up for me. I've just got my um, cleaning fluid recirculating then I'll put that back into one of the buckets and rinse it with Starsan and there we go, job done. I'd like to thank again uh, Bevy, the um, brand owners of Grainfather for sending me this unit prior to launch for um, a fair and honest review. Like I said in my last video, no money has exchanged hands but I do get to keep this unit. Overall, I think it's really, really good unit. Value for money, it's currently RRP at that much in the UK. I don't currently have any, any figures. The brew itself, I've got some learning uh, to do on the machine. Like I said, all I've, all I've brewed on is that G30. I've never brewed on anything else. I think it went pretty smoothly. Very easy to clean, apart from the loop around the outside where the grain basket sits on and hooks onto whilst whilst you're mashing. I can see that that's easily removable to clean behind it. Now there is a nut which holds it in place. You, you start to take the machine apart in order to clean behind it. So I think that maybe, maybe I'm missing a trick. Maybe there's an easier way to get that out other than taking that nut off. But currently I can't find a way. With the G30, you just click it out and clean it and click it back in because a lot of grain can get stuck in that groove all the way around. And the other thing I wanted to mention as well is the uh, drain off point or where there should be a tap or a valve. I think it should come as standard because you're always going to want to take that nut off to blast out the uh, the bottom of the, um, the conical element of it. But other than that, it's been absolutely faultless. Yes, I overshot my numbers because I didn't get enough enough water in there. But I used the Grainfather calculator and maybe that just needs fine tuning for, for, for my boil off rate. So I really hope that this video has helped anyone who are um, considering purchasing the G40. If you are considering buying the S40, 
head over to Richard at Dudes Brews. Um, he's putting a couple of videos out on that version as well. So that'll be good to watch. So the next brew day with this, I'm thinking of doing a small batch. So I've gone from the aiming for the 40 litre. I'm going to be doing a 10 litre batch, but I'm going to be going for something very high ABV. Uh, it's, it's coming into winter now as well. So that'll be perfect for Christmas time drinking beer. Maybe a, an impy stout or, or, or a stout at least. We'll put it through its paces on, um, so we'll put it through its paces then as well. So if you have any questions or suggestions on the G40, drop them in the comments box below. I'll answer them as, as best I can. And also don't forget to check out the links below to the unit itself where you'll find more information. So to summarize, I think it's a cracking unit with a lot less faff with the bottom plate, top plate, pipes in between. It can range from 10 to 40 litres, or 37, who knows. Yeah, I, I think it is, it's very versatile. It's, it's not for anyone who are struggling for space. Obviously that is definitely with the, the G30's remit. This is a, a pretty big unit, really well designed apart from the aforementioned points. So guys, that's all from me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when I send out the next video. We've got a few in the pipeline and a few planned. I suppose I'll see you in the next one. Yechidah. <laughs>